Welcome back, neighborhood. Uh, Brandon, I wanted to just hear your story. I, um, again, our posture is to model just listening and learning, and I think maybe the best way to do that is for to give you some space just to talk about your story and your experience, your your growing up experience. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, I I'm originally from Fresno. I've lived in Visalia for now, I think, the last twelve years, um, and so I call Visalia home. My children go to school here, and my family's here, and so, but I also have family in Fresno. And, and as a as a as a kid growing up, um, I had a pretty rough life. My um, Mom was a teen mom in foster care as a, as a teen, um, you know, and, and she did the best she could, and she's, you know, um, one of the most important people in my, in my life as, a, as an example of the strength that she had as a black woman to navigate um, through her trauma. Um, and understanding that trauma has really plagued my life, and either the, you know, the understanding of how to navigate through things, um, and just you know the 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 position that I take on certain things has been a result of my experiences, like many of us in our life. Um, but I remember as a kid um, growing up, one not feeling like um, not feeling like my life was important, um, not feeling like I fit in, um, not due to anyone's intentional behavior um, all the time, it happened, or not due to you know my mother and my father not telling me or my family not telling me how much they love me and how much they care for me. Um, but it was just from my lack of understanding of me and who I was and you know what I represented and um, and in my history, you know, of, of, of my people. And so it just became um, trying to fit in, trying to figure it out. And then I had my own challenges in school, which is why um, I'm surprised that I'm an educator, but um, which is probably why I became an educator, um, is to ensure that kids who have been marginalized or kids who have felt the way I felt as a kid, insignificant, or that my life, you know, didn't matter, is that I didn't want anyone else to feel that way. I remember what it felt like to feel like I wasn't smart enough, like I wasn't good enough, um, I wasn't light enough, whatever, um, and I never wanted that to happen. And so, you know, um, as a kid growing up, I just remember experiencing that sh experiences that shaped um, my belief, my thoughts about who I was and, and what I was able to accomplish. Um, and it wasn't until I had people in my life who believed in me so much, they believed in me more than I believed in myself, that they began to inspire me to begin to believe in myself. Um, and even till this day, I struggle at times with what they call um, imposter syndrome, you know, am, am, am I good enough? You know, can I do this job? Um, can I affect change? Um, and then realizing that um, it's my desire to do so, so I can. Um, and having the support of people in my life to help me do that. Um, you know, to go back to some of the experiences that I experienced as a, as a kid growing up, as I remember my mother in college at Fresno State, I can't remember the year, I want to say it was 98, um, and, and I was a little boy, and I remember the KKK marching um, or coming onto the campus. Um, they had to write to freedom of speech, um, and at the time I was a little kid, so I didn't know what this was, I didn't know what the demonstration was. Um, so I just went about, about my, you know, my life, and um, but I still remember that image, mm -hmm. that that uh, that that demonstration right there in my face. Obviously, at the time, I had no knowledge of what was going on, um, but I've experienced it and lived it throughout my life. Um, you know, being um, judged for certain things, um, being um, you know profiled in certain ways. Um, and, and realizing that uh, I spent 
many times trying to change the things that I do. Um, I often wonder at times, you know, um, what if my skin were lighter? Um, what if my mom hadn't been in foster care? What if my uncles hadn't been murdered when I was a kid or I have attended 20 funerals and thought it was normal just growing up? Um, you know, what if I wasn't in poverty? You know, what if I didn't experience my own trauma um, and domestic violence situations growing up? And, and, you know, what if I didn't have a teacher who told me things about myself that made me think less of myself? Um, you know, what if I were different? Would I then be seen as less you know, aggressive or then not be seen as defensive or argumentative or a threat? You know, would, would I then be seen for who I am, um, not judged by the color of my skin or the tone in my voice, but judged for the content of my character and the love of my heart? Mm -hmm. um, and so I often wonder those things, and that's just a matter of the experiences in my life. And so, as you said in our first meeting together, we're taking a risk. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that risk is important because creating spaces for dialogue to under, understand the perspectives of others, to listen um, for the purposes of understanding, and to share stories and the perspectives um, of others is so important to changing our history. Um, and, and, and that is really the essence of understanding history is so that we don't repeat it. And so every one of us in our lives, I personally believe this, have a story that allows others to learn from um, and to better understand um, how they can support one another. And so, um, you know, just, just my life in general has been a, um, a blessing because all of the lived experiences have made me who I am. And I will never, ever uh, change that. Um, you know, when I was e expressing to you all of the wonders that I had, I, I, I remind myself and recognize in that moment that as I'm wondering about changing myself, I realize that I often imagine changing who I am, not because I want to, mm -hmm. but because sometimes people aren't willing to change what they think. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do I then change what I think about who I am um, and live that out? And so, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been a, uh, uh, a blessing to have the life that I have and have so many people in my life who've influenced it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for allowing us to learn from your life and your story. Thanks, Brandon. And thank you, Neighborhood, for tuning in. And we'll see you tomorrow.